or outsourced? Dad? We have a huge, I mean, well, I think, I just found out we have a huge technology department. Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> I, just, I, I built it based on demand from the agents, and so we have seven in-house technology people, and I found that that's really high. That's a lot. My wife happens to work for a competitor, and I know, because whenever she has a problem with her back BlackBerry, I always send somebody over uh, to help her out. But we also outsource. We just launched a new website about five months ago with Terabits in San Francisco, and we've worked with 1,000 Watt in San Francisco as well as our consultant. Mm -hmm. So we do both, and right now, we're looking at, you know, for us, 2010 is the year of implementation. We don't need any more new ideas. We mm -hmm. feel like we just yeah. need to implement the ideas we have. And we are looking at a couple of things, outsourcing a little bit more of our technology uh, so that our in-house people can focus on the agent service. And what that mean by that is actually implementing our tools so that not they're just available to the agent, but to the level that the agent is actually using them. Mm -hmm. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what's going to help our brand grow is when the agents actually utilize these tools and it's made very easy for them as opposed to just saying, agent, you have to go there to do it your own. Bottom line is nine out of ten aren't, aren't going to do and it. And if they're not using them, then drop the tool and build another one, yeah. right? Christina? Um, I mean, we just are... <laughs> We use tools like our, our website is a WordPress te template site, mm -hmm. and um, we used WordPress because it's ubiquitous so do we. and, and it's you know, we're, easy we're a and brand. it's free. Yeah. <laughs> um, we use Salesforce. We use um, the different apps that pretty much everybody's using. We just um, do all the research and, and basically I choose, or you know, my CTO, Jack Miller, between the two of us, we choose what we assess to be the best technology, and we implement it through the organization, and my, my agents just never have to worry whether they should um, you know, use Quickly or Smarter Agent or mobile, whatever the mobile tool is. It's like, nope, we've researched it. This is what we're using. We're going to train you really quickly through a Jing video online. You just do a quick little Jing video. They watch it in three minutes. They teach them how to do it. It gives them an example to practice it. Done. That's, yeah. So there's a lot that is free right now. It's just I, I know so, that. It's, it's yeah. so, yeah, so, yeah. so inexpensive. And can you have a big IT department? We, we don't. You know, we pick, we pick uh, vendors that are going to provide support. Mm -hmm. We use Quantum, and if anyone has a question, we don't answer it, even if we know the answer. That's, that's why we've got this incredible team here, and we'd rather spend our time teaching other things. But through the Florida Association of Realtors, they have a uh, uh, yeah, tech hotline. So we have the Jordan Barris tech hotline. It actually is an 800 number, just goes to the Florida Association, and they, they manage it, and they have a very large team, and they, they know our infrastructure, and we save a lot of money, and we provide a better experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, as a brand, use a lot of consultants as well. You bring them in, they're the experts, they help develop something, and then they go on to their right. next job. And I've found that to be very effective. Uh, core services. And there's a question up there, and, you know, I think I know the answer. Well, I know your answer. Uh, you know, are you utilizing mortgage title as a business line and a, and a revenue line, Thad? Not yet. I mean, we use relocation, um, and we just launched relocation with Leading RE. I think two years ago, and so we're happy about that. We have a preferred lender on mortgage um, so that we have a marketing agreement with them so there is revenue generated from that, and there's shares owned. So that's, uh, we did that in lieu of opening up a JV, and primarily because of the time commitment in putting together and opening up another organization. And Illinois is an attorney state, so for title it makes it incredibly difficult to be profitable. So yeah, we've decided so to stay out of title. If you can't make a profit, don't right. do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Christina, do you have any uh, you know mortgage title relationships? Yeah, I mean, we're small, but yeah. we do have a um, um, MSA with our mortgage company. We do own we do own um, stock in a title company, and um, we own a, a homeowners insurance company. And not necessarily like they do produce additional revenue streams, but it's just an additional service to offer our current customers. So we got in it so that we had more control over the consumer experience and we get to dictate what that is because ours is all about consumer experience. So that's the reason why we did this. So we have the closings in our office, for example, with our closing person and our mortgage person's in the office with us. And it's just for consumer. Yeah, and for the ease. revenue is nice, yeah. but it's not about the additional yeah. revenue streams. And Ken? We uh, wanted a very, very agent-centric mortgage uh, partnership so we partnered with Bank of America because we think they provide more tools for the associates than any other that's out there and we just did a whole uh, 
interviewing process with every lender was fighting for the opportunity. And all of our listings are on bankofamerica.com. Our agents who participate then will be featured on bankofamerica.com. Our associates will be featured on kiosks inside bank branches in uh, their real estate centers that they're putting, touchscreen real estate centers in the bank. These are actually listing tools, and that relationship is going to help them take more listings, and there are plenty more benefits. But the biggest benefit is, I think, the additional business and uh, listings that will be taken. So we're thrilled to have that type of a relationship. Good. And uh, there was a, there was a question about the cloud uh, up there. Do you have any security s- concerns? Well, Ed, you talked about the cloud yesterday, and I mean, it, uh, Chase as a bank is now thirty percent cloud, and you know seventy percent uh, traditional infrastructure. So they would be a company that I would think would have a security concern. So you know, everyone is starting to migrate uh, either slowly or more quickly towards that. I'll say we're not there yet. You're small. You've you know, started. You're probably you know, the not... Bi- the biggest concern is actually not the, not, not the vendors. A lot of the vendors have incredible security. But the biggest concern is actually associates, how they use their passwords. Mm-hmm. And that's... Yeah, so there's, there are concerns, that is a very big it's, issue. It's definitely heading in that direction. There are a couple more questions up here, but I thought I'd turn it to the audience. Does anyone want to ask a question live um, of these folks while we're up here? I think we've got about 15, 10, 15 minutes left. <laughs> No, well, I mean, we, we, it's a small, you know, spreadsheet that we put together, but it's not a sophisticated thing that breaks down things. Ours is all based on agents that are re- referred to us through our agents. So it's really about sitting, and we meet every other week for an hour and a half, all of the brokers, and we go through every company, every name, whom we've recruited, <laughs> what process we're in of recruiting them. So it's everyone's very aware of it, and everyone can be held accountable. And so when we go through an office and we read off names, it's actually a personal idea, an understanding of who that agent is. So mm-hmm. if they call or we call them, uh, there's, uh, there's a relationship established. And, you know, the interesting thing is with the recruiting, we use a lot of analytics, and that's one of the reasons why we report nothing, because we know more about our competitors than a lot of the competitors know about themselves. And that's very, very valuable. And we don't um, uh, minimize the value of taking a deep dive, figuring out, talking to associates and other companies about their successes, their market share, their growth, their penetration, why we think they're working in the right neighborhood or not, and then saying, let's get together. So uh, that really makes a big difference. Yeah, I I totally agree. And there are great companies out there that provide that information. Question here? The three of you have built uh, very successful brokerages slightly different models, all all very inspiring and impressive, and some more integrated and some just focused on, on, uh, you know, serving directly consumers. When you envision five years out, when you look in the crystal ball, what business will be the primary one that you spend the bulk of your hours? I I noticed that uh, Tina was doing some technology things, and, you know, is it your core business that you have today, or when you look at it five years out, what business do you see that you show up to work work at oh, every that's day? That's a very good question, and I'm curious as to the answers. On our end, ours is going to be the management of, right now we're creating an email database of our agents' clients. We're up to 380,000. I think that what we'll be focusing on three, four, five years from now will be the content that we're sending to that recipients, and I think it's going to revolve around the fact that the agent is no longer just going to be getting the business because they're dropping the pumpkin off at Halloween. They're going to be getting the business because they're an advisor, you know, or educating their client on not only the real estate market, but how it ties into finance, interest rates, the government not buying back mortgage-backed securities, and how that's going to be a great way to refinance now or sell for Jordan's letter if he adds that into it. So it's going to be more about us increasing the value of our brand through education and smarts, and so that they view our brand as being not just another real estate mm-hmm. company there to service them, but actually a brand that's going to provide them with an education that they need fast, because they don't have time to go do the research on their own. They need a service provider giving them every piece of information that they need right now to make their, in some ways, their biggest decision, financial decision. Exactly. So you're shifting to you know more of what I see the future yeah. being as well. Yeah. yeah. Christina? I mean, I agree with that. Um, the way we're building it is at the hub, there's two things going 